It's go time. It's go time! <laughs> um, hello my friends. Uh, we are at the uh, Association of Internet Researchers Conference in Brisbane. Lovely Brisbane. Yeah. Um, we're sitting in the Botanical Gardens and next to me is... Zoe! Yay! Wait, look. <laughs> Zoe! Zoe! Oh, it's not... Oh, look. It's not doing the thing. Wait. It's Technology! Just... <laughs> Never mind. I'm I Zoe. Will put, I will put little subtitles and stuff. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah. pl please introduce yourself, yourself, Zoe. I am Zoe Glatt. <laughs> I am a PhD researcher at the London School of Economics, and I am researching YouTube, um, specifically the labour of YouTube content creators, both aspiring and professional, um, in the London context because I'm an ethnographer so I can't just talk about like the world I have hmm. to talk about a specific geographical location kind of um, although online ethnography kind of messes up the whole geography <laughs> thing um, yeah and I'm like halfway through my PhD and we met because we both make YouTube videos about stuff stuff and we're both interested in YouTube from a kind of academic perspective yeah. which is awesome too because um, and I tell people this story a lot but I'm about to do a PhD in educational YouTube woo, woo. yeah and people who are sort of my age and older they look at you and go ah. and people who <laughs> are younger and also or know about YouTube they go ah oh, that's really great yeah so it's really nice to talk to someone it who is. actually understands it how is because there aren't that many of us no. surprisingly not that many people studying YouTube uh, particularly at PhD level and even fewer, far fewer who create videos as well. Yeah, so why do you think that is? Why do you think that most YouTube researchers like don't make videos? Yeah, stand back from it. I think it's just too hard, too much work. Really? Yeah. I think they, I think, well, I think there's lots of levels to yeah. why they might not. So on a very basic level, some people feel very uncomfortable putting mm. themselves in the front of the camera. They, it's very foreign to them. Um, in a more sort of masculinist way, they might be like, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm researching YouTubers. Uh, so, yeah, okay. you know, oh, my battery <gasps> thing is, I have another battery, so if it turns off, well, All right. just, that's fine. Um, Let's try and ram it in. <laughs> ram it in! Um, yeah, there's a certain like masculinist discourse which says that you have to be separate from your object of study, which yep. is not my approach. As an ethnographer, that's like very much not my approach, but that is an approach which is very prevalent I would say depending on your like research methods yeah um, more common with data people big data yeah, you know, yeah numbers it's all about verifying and numbers rather than like doing a thing and practicing a thing to and, know about the thing and seeing the people in those numbers exactly yeah um, and yeah on a yeah on a pragmatic level it's just a lot of work and and it you know it for me the choice to make videos was not one I took lightly because you have so many other pressures is yep. that okay? Yep. That's okay. Fine. Sorry, the yeah. uh, battery died. <laughs> Take two. Pros. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> do you? Do you? Yeah. Uh, you were talking about why uh, other YouTube yeah. researchers don't don't actually YouTube and just you know yeah. observe from a distance. Well, the, so the final point was just that it's very time consuming mm. and academics have a lot of pressures on them to do lots of different things. Mm. So you know, aside from our research however long that takes method methodologically to, to collect data you also have to be publishing and presenting and doing Often teaching, other teaching too. Yeah, yeah all sorts yeah. of things so to commit to, to also running a YouTube channel I mean yeah. you know Depends how often you're uploading, but if you want to upload regularly, you have to like really put aside time to do that. And it also depends what kind of videos, I guess, because this won't take long to edit. But my last yeah. lecture with 83 images took me like two days to right. edit. Right, and there's no way you'd have time to do that. No. Uh, well, um, unless you prioritise it. But I think the thing is also like, like that I found some people are really interested in the fact that I'm making videos for yeah. my research, but most people you know it's kind of incidental so it doesn't gain me that much mm. if you know what I mean like even if I made a video that was really amazing I wouldn't necessarily get that much academic credit yeah exactly yeah. academic credibility or something from it compared to what else I could do with that time yeah so you just have to say well I don't care about that I, I just want to yeah I suppose or you'll just attract the other people who are interested in that thing and that's cool yeah just talk to those people <laughs> I did just because I'm only starting in the world of academia and it just blows my mind all the things that have settled into this is okay. Um, do you want to just explain what uh, eth uh, audio auto ethnography is? <laughs> yeah, so 
I'm studying the labour of YouTube content creators and I am an anthropologist so I do ethnography which is basically like long-term participant observation both online and offline which is just hanging out basically in order to understand the lives of the people that you're um, studying I yep. suppose and, and how they understand the world um, and then for me making videos is auto ethnographic which is kind of it's building on that ethnographic method to but it kind of goes one step further in that it well not further sideways in that it, it draws on the sub the subjective knowledge of the researcher themselves in order to further understand the people that they're studying yeah so it's had it's actually quite a contested um, I didn't go into this in the presentation I just did but it's quite a contested method because people have said you know what does talking about your own experience tell you about other people's experience it doesn't necessarily it depends what you're studying yeah. there are also representational issues so if I were studying race or something mm. As a white person, if I was studying a different race and I was using doing autoethnography, it literally would make no sense because I don't have ex a personal yeah. experience of that racial identity. For example, like yep. that, it wouldn't make sense in that context. Um, but for me, to, m making videos is really useful for understanding the experiences of content creators because of lots of reasons. Partly because I can literally see different parts of the website so on a very pragmatic level <laughs> like the back end of the website but but more importantly I can understand how it feels to, to make content and to put stuff out on the internet and to try and uh, make videos that people will want to watch so like all of those sorts of thought processes and also the process of like scripting and editing like, the technical side of it mm. um, all of that I understand much better because I make videos See, I think that's really important. I yeah. don't know how you could be studying this stuff while just like yeah. observing. Well, you know, most of the people, dirty, you know? most of the people studying YouTube aren't studying the experiences of content creators. Mm. They're just they're studying the industry from a broader, you yeah. know, umbrella, whatever perspective. So they're much more, much further removed from the experiences of people. That's not their question. Yeah, I which is legitimate. You know, it's just a different thing, object of study. I yeah, suppose. we've heard a lot about stats and networks and stuff, and I sit there going, ah, people this are is interested boring. in a lot of different things than I am. <laughs> um, yeah. So you've been around uh, on YouTube for a long time. Around watching. the block. <laughs> when did you start watching YouTube? Um, 2007. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. You? I don't know. I was trying to work it out, but um, at least six or seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was a very avid watcher in 2007. When I was like 17, 18, that's when I first found YouTube in the sense that obviously I knew what YouTube was because it was the place where you went for cat videos <laughs> uh, <laughs> in 2007. But I found this creator community, people who are making videos, you know, talking to camera, making vlogs, and I was just like completely hooked by that. I was the Vlog Brothers originally yep. and like Five Awesome Girls, they were my like first people that I watched. Mm. And um, I was just really excited by the idea of like people being able to talk to each other and create community like across geographical boundaries I guess yeah. like on the internet I just was a fan of internet culture um, and I started vlogging in 2008 for a short period when I was in my what we call gap year yep. do you have that here um, um, but then I got a bit embarrassed and I like deleted them all Aww. because my friends my IRL friends thought they were like funny because they didn't get what YouTube was yeah, I really yeah. wish that I had carried on I could be like a big YouTuber now <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, really, the big YouTubers yeah. are the ones that have just hung on the longest. Right? Yeah, basically, yeah, they, they have a lot of privilege. But um, it all kind of came from there, and then I just, I even when I stopped making videos, I always carried on watching, and, mm. and I was always fascinated by how the culture is changing over time on YouTube. Um, I wrote my undergraduate dissertation about Nerdfighteria yeah. in 2013, and then I did my master's dissertation about YouTube, the commodification of YouTube creators in 2017. That was when I was having a real like cynical moment of like, <laughs> it's all just corporations now, which it is, but also not just. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm having a moment in the PhD where I'm still trying to hold on to that critical edge of like, what's going on? It's, you know, partly to do with the branding and the mm. professionalization of the space, whilst also recognizing that these are people who are doing something that's cool a lot of the time and that they are, are creating things. And that, that's still great. So I can't just be like, it's all bad because of capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you just grind to a halt if you, yeah. you leveled that and everything that is all bad because of capitalism. Well, exactly. And
And when did you um, start noticing the educational side of things? Well, yeah, it's a good question. I guess because I came from Nerdfighteria, there was, I said before, I haven't been like specifically interested in educational content, but actually I guess I have been because that is, there's some of the, the OG yeah, educators. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I mean, you may or may not know Hank and John Green, they started Crash Course and SciShow, which are two of the biggest educational mm. channels. Um, and I was there at the beginning of those. Like yeah. I saw them start and I thought that was cool. Um, yeah. I don't watch all of those videos I, and I didn't at the time. I actually met the team who make the animation for it. Oh, really? Yeah, at, at, at VidCon LA. Yes. Mm. No. Yeah. No? Yes. I think so. I think so. They're based in Canada. Yeah. 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 They were really nice. Yeah, awesome. Um, you know how they got that gig? They reached out to them saying, yes. we we do animations we'd love to help you out and I they were know like, that yes yeah exactly yeah. it can work out sometimes guys <laughs> I, got, I get loads of opportunities just by emailing people and yeah. saying like I want to do a thing and they're like okay yeah cool <laughs> yeah. alright well, I'm going to start emailing more people <laughs> you should yeah <laughs> um, it's about knowing where, what the boundaries are and that's the tricky bit yeah, like yeah. how to anyway um, <laughs> yeah so I guess I've, in a sense I've always been interested in educational content because I like learning things and I like watching things mm. and the Vlog Brothers, you know, their their videos are often very much like dealing with a topic and yeah, discussing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I did. I. I. It wasn't until more recently. Like I was always aware of like Vox and these other sorts of you know Veritas Serum, these other sorts of channels that are educational. Mm. But I don't consume that content yeah. that's when I go to YouTube I'm not looking for that content like my husband watches loads of those types of videos that's like his favorite like oh, go yeah. to you know like Tom Scott these kind of often men uh, who are making kind of slightly nerdy like techie kind of informational videos like did you know interesting facts about you know and, and those are all great but that's just like not my home in yeah. terms of YouTube but I do um, and this comes back to what we were talking about before. I do really enjoy the like left tube video essayists stuff. Although to be honest, I didn't come to those until probably a couple of years ago. Like yeah. I didn't know about them before that, really. I don't think. Um, and and I don't. It still isn't the main type of content that I consume. Yeah. Um, although I couldn't really tell you what the main type of content I consume <laughs> is. It's very like diverse, but. I love what they're doing and I think I'm excited by it, yeah. you know? Um, like I recently wrote a chapter with my head of department, Sarah Bane weiser about, um, it was about radical feminist YouTubers mm -hmm. um, and how they are pulled in different directions because of the capitalist kind of neoliberal nature of YouTube if they want to make money on the platform. Yeah. So like I, I said in this presentation, the main way to make money is through brand deals. But that is at odds with the politics of, of these creators. Yeah. So they do crowdfunding instead. And like so and I think just that the whole because I'm looking at it from a labour point of view, that's very fascinating to me. And how the type of content that you make intersects with the job. Like yeah. doing it as a job and your audience. That was a bit of a roundabout answer. <laughs> To the question. I have more questions, but we have to go back to the conference now. Yes. Yeah. So um, you can find Zoe's uh, YouTube channel down below, um, and you can find the video that I did with her on her channel about academics. What study YouTube? Yeah. Um, if you have any more questions, it's fine. I mean, I'm not, I don't care. She's very friendly, so you can ask her on on social media. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> ah, where's the button? <laughs> there is no button anymore. <laughs>